Hi, this is Jack, and this is the first video in a series to help explain Android application programming using the Eclipse Android development platform. From this series, you will learn how to create apps for cell phones. First, install the most current Eclipse ADT bundle. There's a link below uh, that you could follow. The ADT bundle is much easier than previous versions of Eclipse to set up, uh, much less tweaking of directories, etc. Just follow the steps and make sure you also download all the plugins and uh, update your Java. If you need help visually, check out the other link below. There's a video for installing the Eclipse ADT bundle. After your software is up and running, you can enjoy some easy programming examples to get your feet wet in Android programming. In Project 1, we are going to create a simple application that provides the user with a response after clicking a button. When you complete Project 1, you will know how to use the workspace in Eclipse to control two programming languages and effectively create a cell phone application from scratch. Okay, so great, let's get started. Our first step will be to create our destination folder. The way we want to set up our folder is so when you look at the name of the folder, it tells you everything you learned in that project. So first, go ahead and double click on the Eclipse icon and select Run. Now, let's select Browse, and you want to get into the C folder and make a new folder. So go ahead and click on Make a New Folder, and we're going to call this folder Android Programming. And when you're done with that, go ahead and uh, select Make a New Folder again, and let's call the subfolder projects 1-10 and let's go ahead and make one more subfolder this will be our final folder uh, we'll call it project 1 and then space view text v-i-e-w-t-e-x-t -E -E space button b-u-t-t-o-n space edit text e-d-i-t t-e-x-t -E now I know this is a ridiculously long folder title, but again, this is going to be very important when you're looking for this information in the future. You'll be able to know exactly what we did in this project. So when we look at the workspace, it'll read C Android Programming Projects 1-10 and then finally Project 1 View Text button edit text. Now there's no need to check the uh, use this as the default uh, box. Uh, actually you want the freedom to change your workspace frequently so let's just leave that blank and hit OK. So uh, look at the top left click on the X on that tab where it says Android IDE now we're looking at the workspace. First click New, then Android Application Project. Next we need to fill in these blanks. Just write exactly what I write for now and you can do your own thing another time but uh, just important to just do exactly what I do this time. So for the application name we're going to call that Project 1 we can have a space between project and number one that won't really matter when we get the project name that's automatically filled in with uh, project one no space between the one and that's fine let's just leave that just like it is your package name needs to individually identify you what we're gonna do this time is we'll just make it com dot feb 2012.project1. Now you should have all your SDK, that's uh, your software development kit files loaded, and everything should be installed. This way we're all looking at the same picture. If that's not the case, you need to, you know, go back and watch that video on 
how to install your software. So at this point we're all looking at the minimum required SDK. Let's select for this project Android 2.3.3. When we're looking at the target SDK, let's select the same thing. Select Android 2.3.3. And just to make things very simple, we're going to compile with an Android 2.3.3. For the theme, we're going to select None. Now, the reason why we're using this Android version is simply because at the time that I'm making this video, the Android 2.3.3 is the most widely distributed platform on the market right now. What we're trying to do is reach the largest audience. Eclipse does provide platforms for the latest version of Android, but selecting the earlier version of the platform allows a greater amount of people to simply use our program. Now click Next. More about this page later, click Next, and more about this page later, click Next. Blank activities already selected, click Next. For this project, leave the information as it is, and just click Finish. Now we are looking at the Eclipse workspace. You can make several adjustments to the workspace. Simply by dragging the borders around, you can make it look pretty much however you want. If things get a little out of hand and you don't like the way it looks anymore, you can simply return to the default layout by selecting Windows, Reset Perspective, and just hit Yes. And uh, there we are, back to normal. If things really get out of hand and you're closing windows and you don't know how to get them back. Uh, one real quick way to fix the whole thing would be just to go back and hit Windows, Reset Perspective, hit Yes, and now we'll have to kind of build the project from scratch. We go to the Package Explorer, go ahead and click on Project 1, double click on the SRC. SRC uh, stands for source code. That's our source code file. We need to have that up and running in the beginning. Double click on the package folder. If you recall, you created this during the setup. And go ahead and double click on the main activity dot Java. That brings up our Java file and we'll also have to get our XML file back first uh, look towards the bottom of project one folders look for the res file res that stands for resource that's our resource file we'll have to open that double click on the res folder double click on the layout folder double click on the activity main xml and now everything's back in place eclipse automatically starts with the Hello World program preloaded. Let's take a look at that program. In the graphical layout, we see what we hope the end user will see. The graphical layout allows us to drag and drop objects from this palette over to the left to help us create code automatically. By clicking on the activity main XML, we could see that code that was created we can change that code and make the program do pretty much whatever we want. At this point the layout and the text view are basically just set up for position, width, and height. In the next video we're going to manipulate the code to make the program do something a little bit more fun. In addition we'll manipulate the graphical interface and we'll add some widgets and that'll really make the user interface come to life. So go ahead and head on over to Project One Part Two and let's start the coding process for creating an Android application.